Thanks, Pastor Jeff. Good morning again. I'll let you know I have a fear whenever I remove my mask that there's something on my face, especially if I'm wearing a darkly colored one. So you can comment or tell me later if, if something is of my mask is still on my face. The real story of why we're not tag teaming more on this sermon is that I didn't give Pastor Jeff enough details weeks ago on this. So <laughs> I'm glad he just jumped in and, and was a, a good support with that. And I'm so grateful for our whole team too. And thank you for your support as you're praying for each one, especially those who are in transition. It's exciting, but it's, it's a lot happening. And I'm grateful for ADCOM who has, God is blessed with wisdom. And, and I know I'm, I'm glad that all the weight of that decision, those kinds of decisions don't rest on my, my shoulders. So glad that we're a team, that we're a family. This morning, as mentioned, we're gonna be turning in God's word far, if you open up your Bibles, far towards the back of the book. As I think about Revelation, apocalypses, right? That's the word for it, the apocalypse. That seems a little dark. Everything happening towards the end in 2020, people have been talking about different things. It makes me think about everyone has their own way of, how do we say, kind of your readiness routine, okay? So growing up in my family, my parents would always tell us, okay, everyone, we're gonna try to go out the house at this time. Maybe we would have a road trip. And so my dad would have ambitious plans of leaving at four or five or 6 a.m. in the morning. And they've got like a four course breakfast going on, you know, and they're just starting to cook this thing and get this thing ready. And, and you know, the passive aggressive comments kind of start coming like, um, Oh my, look at the time, leaving in five minutes, or can I help you put the cereal away, or things of that nature. And then my mom or dad say, well, I'm just going to go sit in the car. And so they take themselves because they don't want to be the one that's holding up the works. And so everyone kind of, and then we all end up getting out and finally getting to our destination. But what are you up to? What are you doing? Is it that four course meal? And it's funny because we all have our different mindsets. Some of you I know are extremely punctual. You're 30 minutes early. You have your whole routine in place. I envy you and I'm, I'm trying to work on it. But it makes me think of Revelation because Revelation starts out in chapter one, so beautiful. And we're not gonna focus on the first three verses, but just to, to start with the framework here, it says the revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave him to show his servants what must soon take place. He made it known by sending his angel to his servant, John, who testifies to everything he saw, that is the word of God and the testimony of Jesus Christ. Blessed is the one who reads the words of this prophecy and blessed are those who hear it and take to heart what is written in it because the time is near. And you can't help but hear that last part and, and just almost, no matter how many times you read it, almost like a shiver because the time is near. And there's something deep and there's something in it, imminent about that, but something so exciting and so re relational because revelation is the revelation of Jesus. So I say all this because this month and in the next few months, we're going to be spending some time focusing on this book. And I think you'll love just the angle that you see of, of it show, how it reveals who Jesus is and our relationship to him. So that'll mostly be Pastor Jeff coming up in a few weeks. But today, we're just getting started here in chapter one. And so I know we prayed a few times, but especially with the power, I'm just going to pray once more. Dear Father, thank you that your word is living and active. It does not return to you void. Holy Spirit, please speak. Touch our hearts through this chapter. Reveal Jesus high and lifted up. Open our hearts. We ask in your name. Amen. In Revelation chapter 1, verse 9, we'll be in verse 9 through 20 today, particularly. So if you're there, turn in your Bible or your Bible app. I, John, verse 9, your brother and companion in the suffering and kingdom and patient endurance that are ours in Jesus, was on the island of Patmos because of the word of God and the testimony of Jesus. That is quite an introduction makes me think of um, some jobs I've had in the past where you would ask one of your coworkers, how is your day? And they would say, mm, character building. 
And I can almost see John laughing. Your brother and companion, the suffering and kingdom and patient endurance that are ours in Jesus. Maybe some of us can relate to that as he's out on Patmos completely alone in his own way, almost quarantined, right? Even though we're coming out of it now. On the Lord's day, verse 10, I was in the spirit and I heard behind me a loud voice like a trumpet, which said, write on a scroll what you see and send it to the seven churches, to Ephesus, Smyrna, Pergamum, Thyatira, Sardis, Philadelphia, and Laodicea. I, John, turned around to see the voice that was speaking to me. Okay, voice like a trumpet. Who is this? Where is this coming from? What is happening? And when I turned, I saw seven golden lampstands. And among the lampstands was someone like a son of man. Now I'm going to keep reading and describing, and I want you to pay attention. Who is this person that's talking? See if you can figure it out. Someone like a son of man, dressed in a robe reaching down to his feet and with a golden sash around his chest. His head and hair were white like wool, as white as snow, and his eyes were like blazing fire. His feet were like bronze glowing in a furnace, and his voice was like the sound of rushing waters. In his right hand, he held seven stars, and out of his mouth came a sharp double-edged sword. His face was like the sun shining in all its brilliance. Who do you think this is? If you have any doubt, let's see John's reaction. When I saw him, what would you think if you saw someone like that? John said, I fell at his feet as though dead. He was completely overcome and overtaken by something so incredible, so much beauty, so much glory, so much holiness. Then he placed his right hand on me and said, do not be afraid. You hear that a lot in the Bible. Do not be afraid. I am. And I'm just going to pause right there. If you haven't figured out yet who this is, this is Jesus. And we hear throughout his word different times, angels will say, do not be afraid. But there's something incredible when Jesus says it. And especially when he says it in that way, do not be afraid. I am. I, capital I, capital A, capital M. Think of Jesus and how he revealed himself to Moses by the burning bush and how he said his name. And Moses said, who are you? Who am I going to share who you are? And he said, I am, I was, I am, I will be, I am. I am the first and the last. I am the living one. I was dead and behold, I am alive forever and ever and I hold the keys of death and hades. It's so crazy looking at that. And even though this was written 2000 years ago, imagining how John must have felt, right? When he feels like his own world is crumbling, his own world is ending. Jesus says, don't be afraid. I am the first and the last. I've been looking and I'm sure you've seen them throughout this year. It's hard to believe we're almost, we're more than halfway through it now. But I'm sure a lot of you have seen some of the great memes that have come out for 2020. And I was looking a few of them up this morning and I didn't get them, get it together fast enough to get them on the screen. But some of my favorites were the one that, and you can look it up if you haven't seen it yet, but just quarantine memes of one that there's SpongeBob and he's sitting there and he's got, he said, these are my three, something like uh, my, my three friends, a potato chip, a penny and a Kleenex. That's what, that's what we've come to at this point. If you're not sure what a meme is, it's like a funny um, picture on the internet um, that really explains what everyone is thinking. And so you see that and you're like, oh, yes. The other one was time travel is something from another popular show going on in, a, in someone's face um, that, that is just uh, so, just embodies that like look. And it said 2020 time traveler and then the face like oh no i didn't want to pick this era this is not the decade i would have wanted to pick 2020 has been incredible in every way we don't know what's coming next we can think back to what maybe was first we might already be forgetting what happened in january or february because then march came and as we look ahead to what's coming in the end of the year who knows who knows what will be last 
But Jesus says, I'm the first and I'm the last. Whatever's coming next, I'm going to have the last word. That's going to be me. So you can know, I'm the first, I'm the last, I'm going to take that. That's better than anything happening in 2020. I am the living one. I was dead and behold, I am alive forever and ever. And I hold the keys of death and of Hades. Even today, in a time when we fear so many things, when we fear death of ourselves, of our loved ones, Jesus says, I conquered that. I hold the keys. I'm in charge of that. I'm better than that. I have authority over that. Write, therefore, what you have seen, what is now and what will take place later. The mystery of the seven stars that you saw in my right hand and of the seven golden lampstands is this. The seven stars are the angels of the seven churches and the seven lampstands are the seven churches. So a couple questions this morning. This is just going to be a simple message and we'll come to the end. Book of Revelation, end time stuff. Where is Jesus? What is he doing? And where are we? And try to look back. Look back in your Bible. Think about it. Where is Jesus right now in the midst of Earth's history? Where was my family? Where are we when we're trying to get ready in the morning? Are we ready? Are we already out the door? Do we, are we trying to get our breakfast together? Whatever it is. Okay, how about Jesus? What does it look like up in heaven? What are you doing up there right now? Go back to Revelation chapter 1. Let's see if we can find what's going on with Jesus. Look at verse 12. When John turns around to see the voice, what does he see? He sees seven golden lampstands, and among the lampstands was someone like a son of man. So where is Jesus? Jesus is among the lampstands. And if you look it up, those words exactly right there, different translations might say in the middle of the lampstands, in the midst of, but the actual wording is in the midst of, just right in the thick of it. Think of like a smoothie and you're pouring all the things in and maybe that you put in a banana or you put in some milk and it's just right in the midst of it. And it's all together and shaken up together and you can't really separate it. Or maybe when you're right in the midst of, you have one of those big, huge couches and everyone is crammed in there, not six feet apart. You're right in the midst of it. So where is Jesus right in the midst of? Jesus is among the lampstands. He's amidst the lampstands. Okay, this is a lot of nice symbolism. So he's in the midst of these candlesticks. Okay, candles are nice. What's the point? Keep reading. Go down back to verse 20. My Bible, these are in red letters, so that shows me that Jesus is talking. Write, therefore, what you have seen and what will take place later. Verse 20. The mystery of the seven stars that you saw in my right hand and the seven golden lampstands is this. Now pay attention. The seven stars are what? The angels of the seven churches and the seven lampstands are the seven churches. Did you get that? So the lampstands or the candlesticks are what? They're the seven churches. And if we look at verse 12, we can, 11, we can see their names. Ephesus, Smyrna, Pergamum, Thyatira, Sardis, Philadelphia, and Laodicea. And we're not going to go too deeply into them today. But we're going to be studying through these churches throughout this week. And you'll notice that these are actual physical churches that did exist. But they also represent God's people all throughout history. So they start from way at the beginning, right when Jesus went to heaven, and then the last church represents even the time that we're living in now. Okay, so what does that really mean? Where is Jesus? He's among the lampstands. He's among his church. In the midst of chaos and uncertainty, when there are so many places to be, there are so many prayer requests. We're praying for our churches and our healthcare workers and our politicians and around the world. And we're asking and for mission and praying for our neighbors and all this that Jesus will come soon. Where is Jesus? In the very first chapter of the very last book of the whole entire Bible, Jesus wants us to know right before I come back, you know where I'm going to be? I'm going to be right with my church, right here, right among the lampstands. And I hope that encourages you deeply today because it shows me that even though God is omnipotent, he is everywhere and he sees everything, that at this time that Jesus is personally drawing so close to his church. 
Now, for all of you that are immediately getting in your cars and you're saying, let me drive to Forest Lake Church right now, get on 436, hopefully we can escape the traffic, it's a Saturday morning, should be fine, I can get there because I want to meet Jesus. Okay, we have the pews kind of roped off, but still even then, there might be a few issues with that at this point in time. Let me assure you, do you think, is that what that means here? Jesus says he is among the lampstands. He's walking amongst the churches. He's moving. What is the church? Is it this building? It's beautiful. But is this the church? I had a conversation a few months ago that really stuck in my head. It was Saturday. I had just come back from, I would say, church. And I was with my grandparents. This is up in Tennessee. And they had invited me over for lunch. And my, actually, my aunt and uncle got to come. And I think my brother and some of my cousins, somehow we were all in the area. It was really fun. We were probably having haystacks. If you haven't had a haystack, it's a taco salad. Good, good thing to have on Saturdays, on Sabbath. And I'm sitting there eating my haystack, and I'm like, let me just you know, kind of make conversation here. And so I said to my uncle, Uncle Bob, how was church today? Clear question, something you would typically ask on a Saturday, on a Sabbath. And he looked at me and he said, oh, you mean um, the gathering? Do you, are you asking about the place that I went with the gathering of believers today? And I said, oh, if you can't tell, I have some very smart people in my family. They really keep me on track. But the way he said it, it really kind of put me in the right place. I had said, how was church today? I was thinking your experience of going to this building, of going to this place, being there for maybe an hour and a half. Maybe you sang, maybe you heard a sermon. Then you went home. How was church? My uncle reminded me, not in so many words, well, I had a great time today meeting with the church. I got to meet with God's people. That was awesome. We got to worship. But yeah, we, we happened to go to a certain building. Just reminded me all throughout the Bible, a church is not a brick and mortar. It's not composed of, of anything or no matter what part of the world you're in, whether it's mud or it's, it's under a tree. A church is the body of Christ. It's his hands and feet. Jesus is walking among the churches. And right now, some of us are struggling because we really want to be in the physical church. And we really want to sit here and we want, to, we want to sit in the pew and we want to be a part of it. It's part of our experience. And we're looking forward to that. But guess what? That's not where Jesus is. Yes, he's here because he's here everywhere. But Jesus is with you right now because you and I, we are his church. And Jesus is walking among his church all throughout the world. So this week, when you called up your neighbor, when you reached out, when you had a conversation with your coworkers, when you prayed with your family and had family worship, Jesus is there with his church. That's Jesus. That's where he is right now. And my last question is, okay, where is Jesus in these these end times, he's with his church. What is he doing? Well, it's powerful enough just to know that, that he's there and he's walking among the churches and he's present with us. That's so encouraging to know that someone is right here, that I am not alone. But that's not the end of the story. What does Jesus say? The very beginning of the red letters, verse 11, when John hears this voice and Jesus says, Write on a scroll what you see and send it to the seven churches. And then again, we come to the end after Jesus says, do not be afraid. This is who I am. I'm the first thing. I'm the last. He says, write therefore what you have seen, what is now and will what take place later. I'm writing this and then I'm going to jump ahead to chapter two and three and try to skim through with me. This will help if you have a physical Bible, your Apple work too. Jesus begins writing to each and every one of these churches throughout history. Chapter 2, verse 1, To the angel of the church of Ephesus write, These are the words of him who holds the seven stars in his right hand and walks among the seven golden lampstands. Jump down, chapter 2, verse 8, To the angel of the church in Smyrna write, Chapter 2, verse 12, To the angel of the church of Pergamum, 2 verse 18, the angel of the church in Thyatira, chapter 3, the angel of the church in Sardis, right? Verse 7, to the angel of the church of Philadelphia, right? 
verse 14, to the angel of the church of Laodicea write, still those red letters. Jesus is immediately engaging in these seven letters. So what is Jesus doing? Jesus is speaking. And the end of each one of these letters that we're going to study throughout this week, he always says the same thing. He who has an ear, or whoever has an ear, let them hear what the Spirit is saying to the churches. So guess what? Do you wonder what Jesus is doing right now? If he's up in heaven, what exactly is going on? He's with his church, but he's not just with his church. Jesus is speaking. Sometimes we're nervous and we're afraid and we feel like God is silent. But God is not silent right now. He's speaking to his church. And we're coming to a close here. But I want to resonate on that last part because my last question is, where are we? No, not where are you right now. Maybe you're at the beach having a wonderful time. Maybe you are in your house, in your living room. Maybe you're in your bed. Maybe you're hearing this later on. But I mean, where are you? Because if Jesus is with his church and with, if he's talking to his church, where are you in that story? It's easy right now, especially with everything going on, to just get in my own little world and just spend time with my family. And I get online and I go to the grocery store and I, need, I do what I need to do and I'm staying close with Jesus. Amen. Praise God. That's great. But Jesus doesn't really talk about just being with one particular person. He says, I'm being with my church right now. So are we being church? Are we being the body of Christ? Are we gathering together and finding some way to have community and calling people up in our church? Are we reaching out? Are we reaching out to our neighbors? Are we spending time with other people in a safe, yes, distant way? Are we listening? He says, whoever has an ear, let them hear what the Spirit is saying to the churches. If God is speaking right now, am I hearing? Yeah, I'm hearing. I'm reading my Bible every day. Good. But Jesus isn't talking just to one person. He's talking to his church. So there's some things I'm not going to hear if I'm just listening by myself. I've got to be together. I've got to be with you. I need to hear from you. Jesus is speaking to his church. And so I want to invite you. We're going to give you a few invitations in just a few moments to listen to what God is speaking to say, speak, O Lord, because he's speaking not just to me, not just to you. He's speaking to his church. How is he calling us to engage in that? How is he calling us to engage in church and being connected with him as his body? How is he calling us to listen together as a church right now? Speak, O Lord. Let's open our hearts.